Hey guys, Jake is here. In this video today, I'm going to be explaining three different Space Marine build orders. Um, these are the sort of the main build orders that I see getting played a lot, especially in multiplayer. So let's get into it. I'm going to go into Fetamorga here, make sure I got insane AI difficulty, and boom, let's go. Okay, so this first opening I want to show you is the standard opening. Um, I call it the standard opening because it allows for, it, it just um, keeps your options broad. Um, so basically what it is, is you build one barracks, queue up one builder, two scouts. Get the second builder to help build the chapel barracks. And get the, oh, first of all, queue up a generator. And then get the first scouts to cap the point. Second scouts cap the point. And once the barracks is completed, we are going to queue up the force commander. So just the force commander at this stage, because um, on his own he can hold himself in battle really well. So we don't need to necessarily make the Space Marine squad just yet. And in fact, if we do, we won't have enough resources to build our listing posts, which we must do at all costs. As you might have known from my videos, I always stress this, build your listing posts. So we'll build one here. Did I queue that cap order? No, I didn't. Queue. 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 Build that listing post. And you'll see once this listing post is done, we will have enough resources to go for the Space Marine squad. So, Force Commander is almost done. The listing post is almost done. We watch up the top here. And boom. Now we can make our Space Marine squad. Now, even though we we're pretty low right now, this is fine because our two points are still being captured. This post just got done, so now we have enough resources to build another listing post. Which we can do on this one. We'll do it on this one. And we won't have enough to build the post on this point, but because most of our points are built already, we can just protect uh, this point. And we can just go ahead and build the listing post anyway, so all good there. Yeah, with our... So this is where it's standard. We got our Force Commander, Infantry Squad. We can attach the two, and we can apply some pressure. Okay, that's done. LP2. So it's important we get our LP2s up. At this point... Now we go do a bit of scouting. I'll come over here. Is it Necrons, I wonder? Uh, no, Dark Elder. Okay, cool. So we do a bit of harass like this. We build a second generator. We only need two. Decap this point. So we're trying to aim for two LP2s and two generators before we... Go for tier two. My faith is my so good. Bit of harass done there. And we do the last listing post. And we do a bit more aggressive. Decap this. The AI is not that smart, so this won't happen most likely. But um, this is what you should. This is the idea that I'm trying to get across that you be a bit aggressive, and now we go tier 2. And that is where the opening kind of ends. At this point, it's up to you what you want to do. Um, so like I said, uh, we've kept things pretty standard. We've got, we've got some options here. We can build the armory. Um, while we're going tier 2, we can upgrade more listing posts. If we have the resources, we can build an extra generator, which is probably a good idea. And while we're doing all of this, we're still um, harassing our enemy. So these are your options. 
you don't even have to upgrade your LPs if you want to stockpile your resources and maybe go for uh, machines, vehicles. It's really up to you what you want to do at this point, but that's just... Alright, so opening number two, the Three Kings build. Some people call this the Three Champions build, or the Three Lords build, Three Commanders build. I'll call it the Three Kings build for this tutorial. Um, this build is very powerful. I This is my probably my favorite out of the three for the Space Marines. Um, it's like a... It's a strategy where you get to tier two as quick as possible. And you basically make the three commanders, the force commander, the chaplain, and the librarian um, as soon as possible with the addition of the Grey Knights. And that's all you really need um, in in the tier two stage. And this build is pretty cost eff effective and you, it, it, yeah, it really saves you resources. And the idea is to quickly tick to tier three as really as soon as possible. The only downside to this opening is that if you get rushed early, um, it will sort of uh, put you at a disadvantage because you won't have a strong army to defend with in the beginning. But we'll, I'll talk about ways how we can work around that. Okay, let's get into the game. So first of all, I'm just going to queue up a barracks. Uh, queue up one builder, two scouts. Get the second builder to build the generator and have the scouts cap as usual. So cap that point and cap that point. Very good. Cue your cap orders. Scouts reporting to duty. Scouts in position. Like so. And once the barracks is done, start the commander. And then we're going to do the armory. Drop that there. Now we are a little um, stretched for resources, but that's fine. That's, the, that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, that this is the only downside to this opening. But you want the armory up so you can research the plasma plasma gun upgrade. And this upgrade is very, very uh, powerful. Um, it gives all commanders, all commander units, a plasma pistol, which does extremely high DPS. Uh, here it is here, war gear, plasma pistols. And we'll research that now. Keep building our listing posts. We're feeling a bit naked here, so we'll just protect this point from any would-be decappers. Um, but it might pay to just scout ahead with your scouts to see if any any um, enemies are coming to possibly harass you. So once we get these up, perfect, okay. Now we've pretty much got our LPs up and the plasma pistol upgrade is done. We can run around with our force commander if we want to and um, apply some pressure on our opponent and sort of get some value out of this um, upgrade. And by that, what I mean is because we don't have like a infantry squad that we're worried about um, taking losses that we might have to um, reinforce. We can just do this. We can just use our force commander. To, like, look at how quick that was. That was insane. Um, the 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 plasma pistol does so much damage that you can pretty much just roam around like this and and yeah, make problems for for your enemy with just your commander. So we're not investing in any infantry squads or anything like that. 
but it is important that we get our LP2s up so that if we need to run back we have um, some extra defense available for us. So I'm just running in here like because you know tortured slaves I, I don't know how much they cost if they're 60 70 requisition but each each tortured slave I kill will um, you know that incurs a cost on my opponent and that's really good. Um, this is how I'm getting value. And now that we have enough resources, we can go tier 2. And... Yeah, like... All I have is this force commander, so I'm not really worried about reinforcing. I can just kind of sit on my ass and just um, build up resources, so... <laughs> This is a pretty controversial, <laughs> and especially multiplayer games, uh, when your opponent, uh, sorry, not when your opponent, when your ally sees you doing this, I'll be like, oh, he's, a, he's attacking, he's, he's a noob tacker, but don't take any notice of that, that's, this is kind of smart, really, because you're just, um, this is all for your benefit, you know, like, I'm just building more plasma generators, getting my economy higher high because what I want to be preparing for is the um, sacred artifact which will bring me my which will bring out my great knights for me so at this point now I've upgraded some more lp2s just to get extra requisition 90 plus 98 it'll be plus 104 soon and plus 40 power is perfect so I can just wait up just so I have enough that I can make the chaplain and the sacred artifact. So we're tier 2 now, I'm going to build the sacred artifact and build the chaplain straight away. As soon as you hit tier 2, make the chaplain. Now watch my force commander here, he can just one-shot these uh, warriors. Not one-shot, but you know, he does so much damage, like it's insane. This should be illegal. Okay, that's done. Now we get the Grey Knights out and overwatch the Librarian because we need him as soon as possible. So this is this is the opening happening now. We are tier 2. And because I've got all that sorted, I'm just going to eco a little bit. Focus on my eco. Get the last LP2 up. Uh, build another generator. Why not? Just get enough power to do the globals. Overwatch our Grey Knights. Attach the Chaplain to the Grey Knights. Set them to ranged. So that's two out of our three kings. And the other absurdly powerful thing about this opening is... Um, I'll get a probe out. Just for the Mandrakes. Is the abilities. So... The Librarian has the Smite, the Chaplain has the Demoralize, and the Grey Knights has the Psychic Inquisition, which, like, oh my god, this combo of abilities is just insane. So now I'll do the Requisition bonus, global, and, oh, the Librarian can detect infiltrated units, what am I on about? And we'll do the power, and now at this point we just go and attack. We've got our globals going, everything's going good, our economy's looking great. Now we just... Now all we have to do is just attack and gain value. So look at how much damage uh, these guys will just do to this listening post. Like, what the fuck is this? Come on. <laughs> this is insane. And that's just them shooting. I think Grey Knights are better in melee combat. But now we can just go ahead. I'll make one more plasma generator just to be a dick. We'll come over here, decap that point, and this is all gaining value for us. Um, we're destroying our opponent's economy. Uh, that's unfortunate. And now we do this, the moralizing shout. That'll slow the enemy down. And then use Psychic Inquisition, right on top of them. 
And if you want to add a little bit of burn, smite, or just destroy the whole squad. And look, look at this insane damage. I need to split up a bit here, but look at this insane damage that we're doing right now. Three commanders with plasma pistols just annihilates everything. <laughs> oh, we go tier 3 now. In the 8th minute, we can go tier 3, which is quite fast. So... Yeah, these guys are just going to die very hard. Go back to attack. We have that many resources that we can even make some LP3s. Get even more requisition this way. If you want to be a bit toxic. Or, actually, another good idea is to probably just research, you know, veteran upgrade. Make your commander stronger. Get some bionics in there. Furious charge isn't necessary, but if you want, you know, that extra kind of... Uh, Disruption from your Grey Knights. You can research that if you want to. And this is it. You just. This is the whole strategy. You just go and rip everything apart. <laughs> you don't need to make anything else because this is just on its own. It's just powerful. Now, maybe your enemy will have tougher vehicles to deal with, in which case you probably would want to. Um, consider making a space marine squad with rocket launchers or something just to counter that but yeah it all depends on the situation really so I'm not tier 3 yet when I hit tier 3 what I'm gonna do okay so there we go there's a that's what I was talking about once I hit tier 3 immediately go for the orbital relay um Actually, these guys, even in melee, can probably take on vehicles as well. Uh, he's not going to attack me in melee, so I won't show you. And you probably want to have the power weapons researched for that. To get the command of the demon hammer. And now we can just go globals. Globals, and now that the orbital relay is done, we can just orbital bombard the enemy base. Just so much damage, it's crazy. This feels illegal, <laughs> but it is what it is, so... Oh, we can also make our Terminators. So, yeah, this early in the game, we're tier 3, and we're already getting our strongest units out. If we had the Machine Cult already built, we could even start going tier 4. So let's just see how quickly this vehicle goes down. I mean, that's still pretty good for, you know, units that aren't even anti-vehicle. Yeah, Terminator's out. So yeah, this is the Three Kings opening, as you can see. Very powerful, very good stuff. Um, yeah, that's all there is to it, really. Just get to tier 3 as fast as you can, get your strong units out, and you just rely on your three commanders to do all the heavy damage for you. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Let's get on to the next opening. Okay, so I kind of rambled on in the, in the last um, opening, but I'm going to try to speed through this um, one, because there's... A few variants associated with this one but this is um opening number three which is the scout sniper mess all right so according to my notes here so we go build the armory scout build a scout scout so you want three scout squads and queue up two generators yeah so i'm just going to try um rush through this one a little bit because we got quite a bit to cover so yeah and we get the second builder to build generator. Oh, and don't forget to do the sniper training research as well. Sorry, forgot to add that. And Q cap orders. 
Um, skip that. I can even time lapse this part. And build the LP. This one's done. So, let's see here. Okay. Q U to go attack. The main thing, um, even though the research is about to be done, is we just want to get our LPs up first. Like we can get our snipers now, but I'd like to just, yeah, get these LPs going, fortify your points. Um, yep. Okay, cool. Now that all the points are done, we can overwatch the snipers. And this is where the opening comes into play. We are equipping our scouts with sniper rifles that are very long range and do a shit ton of damage. And this opening is pretty effective against pretty much all the races, but it is a bit more micro intensive. So you've got to keep an eye on your scouts at all times, because if you let any die and you need to equip them again, it can get quite, um, quite a bit costly for you. So just be very careful that you're not um, handicapping yourself. Actually, we'll just do the second LB2. Come over this way. And now we're just looking for enemies to kill. Like here. Boom. Dead. <laughs> this is a pretty nasty um, opening as well. Like this squad of three warriors. Four snipers. Ah, it only killed two. Usually it could, they can wipe out the whole squad. But um... Yeah, just the long range and the high damage is just, it, it really gives you the upper hand in a lot of the fights. It's very frustrating to play against this um, opening. So like here, I gotta watch out that I don't let too many of my scouts die. That whole squad just wiped out. And now we can go tier 2. And that's the opening. So... Scouts awaiting orders. Yeah, we're gaining value with three. You, you can make more squads than three, but three is pretty standard. You probably don't need more than three. Hi, Future Jake is here. I just wanted to cut in and just stop my um, past self, because he's an idiot, because this opening is the Scout Sniper mess. So it is actually more common to make more than three. Um, scout sniper squads um, uh, usually people go up to four even five squads um, I think the reason why I said to only do three is because it will allow you to segue into these next openings which I'm about to talk about so if you are going for the scout sniper mess by all means make more scouts and give them all sniper rifles um, but for these next openings, you should really only have three, so that you have the resources to um, go into these openings. Cool? Alright, great. Bye, back to the video. But they all have to be equipped with snipers. And... Yeah, you go out, gain value, kill off enemy squads with your sniper rifles. All the while, you're focusing on your economy. You know, while all this is happening, I can be building generators. But this is all I'm stuck with. And this prevents early harasses, or it counters early harasses. Um, you can target enemy builders. The only thing is the snipers don't really do that well against commanders and buildings, obviously, but everything else, it's, it's uh, perfect. So this is where this part of the opening ends. I will now explain the other variants. Alright, so I rewinded the clocks a little bit, so we're back to the situation where we have our snipers and we've just started going tier 2. Now, the three different paths uh, this 
the sniper um, opening will lead to. The first one that I'm going to show you now is the land speeder mess. So let me just unpause here. And basically what we want to do now is to start building more plasma generators because we want to stockpile our power and um, sort of get it prepared for that um, massing of the land speeders or abuse as uh, other people call it. So make maybe like four generators. We can upgrade one more listing post. And as usual, get a bit of value. Make it hard for our enemy to counter this as much as possible. And one more generator, why not? So while we're waiting for tier 2, we just go around and cause a bit of problems, a bit of shenanigans. Okay, and we will need to research the vehicle cap increase uh, because when you build the machine cult, I think it only provides two or three population, I can't really remember. Either way, it's not enough, so we need that extra um, vehicle cap. So just keep wandering around here and now you see I'm building up my resources here and now that we're tier 2 we can build the machine cult. And for the next uh, openings I'll actually save it at this point because the principles all apply up until this point so I'm just going to save it here. Cool. Alright. So we got the machine cult on the way. And set a rally point up here somewhere. Okay, and now we put the land speeders on Overwatch. And while that's being built, we can make more generators. Uh, increase our squad cap once more. Oh, we got the Archon. We won't be able to handle him, so we'll just come back a bit. We, our scouts won't be able to handle them, but the land speed as well. Okay, we can just snipe these mandrakes like so. Easy. And basically, this opening will just give you a ton of DPS um, to inflict on your enemy. And it's also very hard to stop. Um, something like this, this kind of um, abuse. Like these uh, speeders can just chase down weak infantry like warriors who don't have much armor. And once we have enough land speeders, uh, the combined DPS will be able to even take down uh, commander armor. And I will need a scalp probe just for those mandrakes. And we even still have our scouts as well, just to apply even more salt to the wound. So this is already just insane. We can even just go tier 3 right now. Because we will still have land speeders in production. And land speeders are cheap. They're cheap vehicles. Um, they're cheap vehicles. And we can make a lot of them and do lots of damage, and that will uh, be bad for our enemy. They'll have to be constantly reinforcing to make up for their losses and all that, and we're just going to tier 3, like, we're not even worried. So that's why some people call this, um, this build order kind of like abuse. It's very hard. To, it's it's very hard to stop, especially if the en uh, enemy is still in tier one at this stage, which can happen sometimes. Even if they're tier two, there's uh, usually you do enough damage that you can uh, stop them from coming in with any counters. But if they do have a counter, like Dark Outer, for example, have the um, scourges with the Dark Lances. This many land speeders can still rip apart all those scourges. 
So, yeah, it's like your enemy has to put in a lot of investment. Okay, here we go. Raiders are effective against vehicles, I think. But, because there's such low health, these land speeders can even just rip apart the, the raider as well. That's the problem with dark outer vehicles, they're a bit weak. One land speeder goes down, but one more will replace it. And now we're tier 3, we can go for the orbital relay. And once... Ah, oh, we've got enough land speeders, we can just go for the tier 4 heavy armor deployment research. And already this early in the game, we're going tier 4. We can even go for our land raider. Eventually. This is basically the land speeder mass opening. So that's all I'll be showing for this video for now. So I'll just move straight on to the next one. So let's get into it. Okay, so going back to this sort of situation, we're building our machine coal, we have our plus 50 power. We are now going to go from the land speeder mass opening to the land speeder tempest mass uh, opening. So, let's get into it. Let's just build this machine cult up. Get these scouts out and about. And did we do the research? Yes, we are getting the vehicle squad cab. That's good. And now, when the machine cult's done, we will overwatch our land speeder tempests. So the point of this opening is you can go the land speeder temp uh land speeder tempests have two add-ons to their kit. They can have the infantry one or the um an anti infantry or anti vehicle slash buildings. We are going to go with the anti buildings for now. Basically the idea is that especially on bigger maps this opening is useful because you want to get all five tempests. I'll just research the vehicle cab increase once again. You want to get the max um, Tempest population possible, which is 5. And we'll just do the crack missiles. And the idea is you want to hurt your opponent's economy by targeting their listening posts and generators. That's the idea of this opening. So, we just get our Tempests together. I mean, at this point, you can even just get three out to do some damage while you wait for the other two. I've seen people do that. So, we'll just wait for the third one. Three is enough to do plenty of damage, anyway. And you just want to get in there as soon as possible. So... Cool, we got three here, let's move out. Now the good thing about Tempests is they're very mobile, they just fly straight over to your um, opponent's buildings. And that's why they're good on long maps, they can just, um, they can quickly get to these uh, resource buildings and just apply lots of pressure. Like, look at how quickly this listening post goes down. So that's minus six gone from our opponent's economy. If we get attacked we can just fly over this impassable terrain here, make it hard for our enemies to chase us, and just start attacking their plasma generators. And look at how quickly that goes down. And we can go tier 3. We can go tier 3 because our enemy will be so focused on trying to destroy these that we don't really have to worry about them attacking our base. So just like this, keep kiting. And this is really dirty, this is disgusting, but there's no rule against doing this. People do this a lot, especially on uh, large 8 player maps like Rian Jungle, you see this happen a lot. You just hurt. Opponent's economy, you could even go for their production buildings. Look at how fast this wall of blood will go down. So yeah, this is the opening you want to go if you just want to, you know, hurt your opponent's economy as much as possible. And you just basically get to tier 3. You can research the globals. 
but you can basically just stockpile resources. Because you got the snipers as well. I could be using these snipers to kill off the infantry. But yeah, this is pretty much it. It's just a lot of harassing and being annoying, really. Come back here, destroy this. And... Yeah, this is this is the gist of the, the opening. Try it for yourself, uh, see what works for you, practice it out, and now I can go on to the next one. Okay, so for the final opening I wanted to talk about is the Hellfire Dreadnought Mess uh, variant of this uh, Scout Sniper opening. And, so we'll get into it here, build our Machine Cult. Get the scouts back around. And once this is complete, just like with the others, we are going to overwatch the Hellfire Dreadnought. Oh, population full. Alright. Now we need to um, do one more of these. Because Hellfire Dreadnoughts are three. Yes, three vehicle caps. So we need as much cap as we can get. Now. Because Hellfire Dreadnoughts are slower, less mobile than uh, Land Speed of Tempests, generally you don't want to use this opening on bigger maps. Uh, maybe smaller maps is good. And if your opponent is massing lots of infantry, that's where these. Um, that's where this opening really shines. Because the Hellfire Dreadnoughts do a lot of disruption. Actually, I won't use these scales, I'll use the Dreadnought to demonstrate. So let's say I have him taken here. Now these missiles just do a lot of knockback damage. Which is crazy. So this one Dreadnought doing all that knockback. Imagine like four or five, which is what people do. They they uh they really spam the the Hellfire Dreadnoughts. Hellfire Dreadnoughts are also quite tanky making this opening quite hard to counter. It's hard for um, infantry or heavy infantry that are anti-vehicle to get close enough and do any sort of damage without being knocked around too much. Uh, I'm not sure how much damage the missiles do on vehicles, I would assume, because the missiles they would do a decent amount of damage, but um, this is primarily for uh, infantry masses from your opponent. With this uh, Hellfire do not spam. So let's see the damage here. It does actually, this is doing pretty decent damage as well. So I think maybe four or five is uh, what people usually go for in this opening. I've built as many generators as I can, but... Ooh, full population, okay. Maybe... I'll just stop that one for now, and I will just go tier 3. The, the idea with all of these openings, these uh, mass openings, is to go tier 3 as soon as possible. Because um, the more cases than not you will reach tier 3 faster than your opponent and even tier 4 and that makes it very hard it makes it very hard for your opponent to keep up and counter your strong tier 3 units well, when they're still tier 2 or earlier so this is pretty much it see he, he's got scourges like let's say my opponent was going to make scourges with dark lances. Look at just this, all this amount of disruption. They'll be dead before they can even uh, finish off my dreadnoughts. So this this opening is more of an annoying one. Uh, I think the ones that people use the most is the land speed of tempest or speeders. 
But this is very much plausible. This is a good counter to, you know, Tau, Imperial Guard. Um, I want to say Orcs, I think. Could be good. Dark Reaper, Spam. All those sorts of, you know, annoying... Annoying situations. So, yeah, not too much for Dark Elder. Uh, to counter against Dark Elder here, but... This is the gist of it. If you want to make more, make more. But you might need more population cap. So then we get tier 3. Just do that. Do the uh, heavy armor deployment. Yes, my lord. Yes, most and we just snowball from there. So that was 3 Space Marine build orders. Uh, I hope you learned something from this video. And um, yeah. Use these techniques in battle. Practice every one of them. Find that sweet spot for you. And I will be making more videos on other races, build orders, so keep an eye out for those. But in the meantime, take care, and I'll see you later.